Oh, thank you very much. Um, well, my name is Alex, and just like Robin over there, I'm a designer. But unlike him, I don't have fancy slides, I don't really like the term designer. Uh, I think it has become a stereotype. The, the point I'm trying to make is that I, I can talk the talk of designers, but I don't want to walk the walk. Because design has become all about colors, about shiny objects, about wearing fancy glasses. But to me, that is not the essence of what design is. Design should be about thinking creatively. It should be about doing what hasn't been done before. It's about, well, you all heard this one, thinking outside of the box. Well, it's this box that I want to talk to you about today. Because throughout history, it's been creative thinkers who shaped our world. It's been philosophers like Aristotle who helped us understand the world around us. It's been inventors like Thomas Edison who connected us and who enabled us to, be, to do magnificent things with our society. It's been entrepreneurs like Henry Ford who fulfilled needs that we didn't even know that we had. And it's these kind of traits that I look for in designers and I, I think are the epitome of design thinking. It's, um, <coughs> this is not just something that is uh, like a hunch from a design student that I think that, these pro that this kind of thinking can solve the problems that we face as a society. Actually, Kurt Gödel, who was one of the most influential mathematicians of all time, he proved that you need out-of-the-box thinking to find solutions for real problems. This is his incompleteness theorem. It's quite a little bit of gibberish, it's all in logic, so I'll try to explain it in a little bit more uh, easy language. First of all, he says that any problem is bound to deliver solution, uh, to deliver any system will lead to problems that cannot be solved from within the system. So basically what he says here is that you need a, a new perspective. You have to step outside of the system to find a perspective that will lead you to a solution. And that is basically the point what I'm trying to say. So any system, whether it be education, economics, business, governance, they're all bound to deliver problems. It's inherent to the fact that they are systems. And who deals with these problems? Who are the leaders that take that implement these solutions? It's these people. We all, we all have kind of a, our own opinions about it. Generally, at TEDx, we don't really like these people. Um, but I don't think it's their fault that we, we blame them for the, the system to be corrupt. We blame them for all the mistakes that happen, all the bad things that we see in humans. But the, the, the point is that they are the ultimate system thinkers. They are the bureaucrats. They are the institutions. And the reason that they are in charge of all these systems, is that they are the best in thinking in systems. So it's not really them that is the problem, it's their solutions. So we have complex problems around us that arise through these systems. We have incompetent leaders because um, they inherently to their leadership they cannot solve these problems. And we know that creative people can solve these problems, but somehow they don't. So what's going wrong here? The people that are in charge don't listen to us, because us creatives speak a different language. We cannot communicate between our systems, because we talk through the, through the language of art, through design, through technology. And they talk to, through the language of spreadsheets and stuff like that. So there's a, there's a mismatch here, and that's why we cannot implement our creative great ideas into the people that take the actual solutions. So here's my idea. We need to redesign designers. Not only do we need to have these gray suit people uh, think outside the box, but as well, we as creative people, we need to realize that we're inside of a box. That we cannot, uh, cannot cross the borders when we keep speaking the same language. So what I want to do is I want designers to be put in these places of these leaders, you know, of these gray suits, in governance, in business, in, in all these systems, I want creative people for instance, a ministry of perspective that uh, for any big major governmental change uh, or, or plan, they will come up with new ideas and alternatives and ideas on how to do this better. Or next to the CEOs and the CFOs, we should have a chief perspective officer who looks at these plans and thinks, is this really 
what we want to do with our business, what, with our society. We need, we need leaders that look at people and not at economic models. We need people in our leadership positions that come with elegant solutions, like designers do, and not with extravagant budget plans. Ladies and gentlemen, our world, it's been said many times already, it's changing, it's changing, it's becoming more complex, and it is happening faster and faster and faster. So the people who are in charge should be able to deal with these changes. And that's why we need design thinking in leadership positions. Thank you very much. Thank you for this presentation. Um, judges, please. Uh, thank you for this very uh, uh, clear ID. Uh, I have one question. Uh, you say that you, uh, you propose to redesign designers and your solution feels like, okay, just put them in another position. Yeah. So what is designing, what, is, what exactly do you mean with the redesigning of the designer? Well, it's a very broad concept, I uh, understand. Um, first of all, we shouldn't call designers designers anymore, because designers, uh, all the, um, the stereotypes that are bound to it, like the, the, the graphics and the, the actual product designing and stuff like that, that should be kept like it is. But I want uh, designers to stop calling themselves designers and start spreading uh, around through all the layers of society, of uh, uh, business, of influence, and uh, stop thinking about themselves as designers, but think about themselves as creative problem solvers. Or I'm still looking for a good new word, actually. So if anyone, <coughs> anyone knows anything, that, that would be great, but I haven't found it yet. So but it's not really about redesign, or it should lead to redesign. <coughs> yeah, I, in, a, in a very broad way. It should, designers shouldn't be designers anymore, not all of them. Please. What is it that you are going to do to uh, change our way of uh, design thinking? Uh, first of all, I'm not going to be a designer. I'm going to try and, uh, uh, well, influence the people that, uh, that, are, that make the decisions, uh, maybe through consultancy or something, that uh, I want to show <coughs> people the power of, of creative thinking. Um, and I really try to reach the top layers there and try to find some influence on, in, in getting there. And I hope uh, I will succeed in that, but I don't have a very, very straightforward step plan on uh, how to reach that yet, but uh, I guess with the, with the right ambitions and uh, getting your voice out, maybe uh, we'll succeed. Any further questions from the judges? From the audience, any questions for Alex? Jim over there. Uh, I'm interested in your uh, definition of creativity. Does you, tend, you, you make the intention that only designers are creative, but I think creativity is, is a really wide word, and this, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. more, more. Um, I, I completely agree. I uh, I think this, um, creativity is um, about doing things that haven't been done before by by looking at new perspectives and looking at, at problems in ways that are uh, they're not normally looked at. So that can be in anything. It's uh, kids do it all the time. They they, they amaze us with the ways they look at things that, we've, we've, that we have assumed as normal. And breaking these assumptions and the normal behavior, the normal ways of thinking, that, that to me is very fishy. Gentlemen over there. Uh, you said like uh, the lawyers and the businessmen, they are inside a box which they can't think out of. And that when you put creative people into the companies and into the other layers of politics and stuff, that they will be able to think outside the box. But what makes you think that they won't adapt to the system? That's a very good question, because if, uh, as a designer, you're too long uh, with the same company, for instance, you probably won't be able to see outside the box as well, uh, either, after, after time. But I still believe that um, people do what they are trained to do. And uh, these people that are in charge now, they have become the best at the thinking inside the system that they, uh, that they work in. So managers will always manage people, for instance. And I think designers, no matter how much they, uh, they get ingrained into a certain system, they will always have at least a, a, a big amount of design thinking still left in them. So I think you, know, you definitely have a good point, but still it will be a lot more creative than the people who are there now. 
I think corporate leadership positions come with a lot of responsibility and they